you know him. Come on, somebody. That's why Psalms 34 and 8 said, Oh, taste the Lord and see that he is good. Blessed is the man that trusteth in him. Somebody say, taste and see. Some people just come and say, Boy, well, don't that look good? I bet you it tastes good. Ooh, that's pretty. Take a picture of it. I don't remember it. Come on now. You can take a picture, hey amen, of that juicy steak. And you can think about what it would taste like and you can memorialize it and put it up in your house. Come on, somebody. But you ain't got no experience with that steak until you take your fork and take your knife. And if it's a real good one, even without your knife. Come on, somebody. And just and put it in your mouth. And look at your neighbor and say, Chow. Hallelujah. And swallow. Digest that thing. Come on, somebody shout. That's when you experience it. And a lot of people just come to church, sit on the pew with the pneumonia and on the chair with the chair. Oh, look at Jesus. Oh, praise God. That's good. Oh, don't forget this service. Shake the picture up. Shake the preach hand. Tell him how good it was. I count that as an insult uh, when people just want to shake my hand and say how good it was. Come on, somebody. Hallelujah. <laughs> Somebody say taste and see. Taste. And there's more than one flavor. Hallelujah. Amen. Somebody say there's more than one flavor. You may have tasted one flavor of his presence, but there's always more. I'm telling you, Jesus has got more flavor to his presence than Sonic does uh, the ice cream. And floats. Sonic got probably more flavors than anybody in the world when it comes to a Coke float and a whatever float and a uh, milkshake. Come on, somebody. But there's more flavors to the presence of God. Somebody shout, that means you ain't tasted all he's got to offer. There's always more. 